Hey everyone, welcome to Megan Grace DIY. Today's episode is gonna focus on my favorite time of the year, which is Halloween. Now, Halloween can be a little stressful to any costume designer, especially if they're really overwhelmed and burnt out with their job, but for me, Halloween is kind of like the costume design Olympics. A couple years ago, because I live right outside New York, I found this awesome party in New York City that I would go to where there'd be other people who really take costume designing as seriously as I do. So I would spend months coming up with these great costumes for it, and I would get to see all the other ideas when I got there. Now that party has since stopped happening, but my love for Halloween has certainly not died. And one thing that happens every single Halloween is I get lots of questions on how do I execute a great Halloween costume. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I am going to take all the advice that I would give to you if you were my friend and put it into one handy dandy little package as well as at the end break down for you how I attack a Halloween costume in a way that hopefully you can do at home so you can have the best Halloween costume that you've ever had. Tip number one, and this is a tip that I would give pretty much to any of my students, any of my friends, basically anybody working on any type of project, and it's gonna feel like common sense, but I'm going to give it anyway, and that is give yourself plenty of time. I used to work at Joanne Fabrics when I was in college, I've had lots of fun jobs over the years and never fail. There would always be people on the day, maybe two days before Halloween, the day before Halloween, or even on Halloween, who would come in and they'd have all these supplies and they'd be frantic, like I could see it in their eyes because I was a seamstress or sewer for quite a long time at that point. I could see it all over their face. I'm like, oh, this person's screwed. They don't know what they're doing. And they'd come up with the pattern, they'd have the fabric and they'd be like, oh, um, you know, how much do I need of this? And you know, I don't really sew, but my mom's got a machine so like do you think I could like make this tonight and I would just kind of stare at them and be like no no you cannot make this tonight honey you cannot make this tonight go get a glue gun and start gluing some things together because if you've never sewn before you cannot make a costume in one day you're not going to learn how to sew that fast so if you are looking to learn how to sew and you're like this is something I really want to commit to I want to make from scratch my own Halloween costume this year you should be starting right now. If you're watching this video, I'm filming it at the beginning of September, you should start right now, okay? If you're watching this video and it's the first week of October, you should start right now. If you're watching this video, it's the week before Halloween, shut this video, well, watch the whole video first, but at the end of this video, shut it off, go to the store, get your stuff, start right now. If you're in November, start your costume for next year, why not? Give yourself a lot of time. The whole point of that is A, everything is so much harder when you're rushing and you're stressed, and B, I want you to enjoy the process. I'm a costume designer because I love doing it. I love the creativity of it. I love like that I get into a beautiful like zen-like space when I maybe put some like rain noises on and I'm crystalling things and the whole process should be enjoyable. So if you don't give yourself enough time, you're going to be stressed and it's not gonna be fun. And that's what we're all here for, right? This is all supposed to be fun. Now we're gonna circle back around to this first point because pretty much every single point after this hinges on this first point of giving yourself plenty of time. Sorry guys, I got like hyped up there for a second. I take costuming very seriously. It's just, you know, it's just, that's my thing. I get, I get real worked up. Tip number two, purchasing versus making. Now, there is no rule book that says in order to have a great Halloween costume that you have to make it from scratch. Frankly, there's a lot of things that go into a Halloween costume that I wouldn't recommend making because it just makes more sense for you to put your time and energy into the really cool custom pieces that you can't purchase than, you know, spending time making a pair of jeans that you could just buy at Walmart or at a thrift store. So when you're first coming up with your inspiration, your design, and really solidifying your idea, I want you to decide what in this look do I need to make and what in this look can I purchase? Now, you could be looking to purchase more custom items and that's fine, but keep in mind the more customized the item, the more difficult and the more expensive it'll be. Hand in hand with this, I want you to think about what is your skill level? Be honest, are you a really crafty person but you just really don't know how to sew or don't know how to do a certain technique but you'll probably pick it up pretty easy? Okay. Or are you a person that you tried to sew in seventh grade home ec and it just like didn't go well and you never tried again and you're really scared of it but you wanna try it again but you're really not sure? Okay, just be honest. Be honest with whatever your skill level is and try to move forward appropriately. If you're planning to purchase items, again, make sure you have enough time, 
go search at Goodwill. That's a great place to find costume items. So that way you don't have to be buying a more expensive version online. You can also hit up your friends and see if they might have something that would work with your costume. And last but not least, you can always look on Amazon because they have come a long way over the years, I feel like, for basic costume pieces. A lot of items you can get in two-day Amazon Prime, so you can get them pretty quickly. Um, I remember a couple years ago when I'd order pieces off Amazon, they'd always be really chintzy and crappy. And I feel like over the past year, they've gotten much better with that kind of stuff. I mean, there's still some real lemons out there but most of the stuff I get is pretty decent. So if you're ordering just some basics, those are some places to start looking. Another way to approach making is you can purchase some items and add to them and customize them. So like one year I was Poison Ivy and I purchased the corset as the bottom layer. I spray painted it green and then I built on it with all the leaves. It was pretty simple, just some glue gun, some rhinestones, and it looked great. So that's something that you can do too, is you can buy the basics and then customize them for whatever look you're trying to achieve. Should you decide that making your costume is the route that you want to go or making certain pieces tip number three is going to focus on your fabric choice fabric choice can make or break a costume so when you think about those spirit halloween or like online all-in-one package costumes one of the major issues with them there's a couple trust me but one of the major issues is the fabric is all one fabric. It's never really like appropriate to that actual garment. So for example, let's think about Anna from Frozen. One of the really cool things about that movie is the actual fabric of their outfits is very lifelike. So where things are supposed to be wool, it looks like wool. Where things are supposed to be velvet, it looks like velvet. So if that's what the costume is supposed to be made of, that's what you have to make it out of. When you go to the store, there's going to be like cheapo $3.99 a yard fabric calling your name. And you're going to be like, oh, look, I can get this. And it's so cheap. And I'm going to save so much money. Step away from the costume satin. Please do not use it. It's going to be a nightmare to sew. And it's going to look like crap when you're done. It's going to look like, again, a party store costume because it's not high quality fabric. Now, I am not saying that you need to go out and buy $20 a yard fabric. If you're really investing in costumes, it's something you want to wear over and over again. Like you might wear it for Halloween, but you also might wear it to a Ren fair or to a cosplay. Please go ahead. Yes, invest your money in really good quality fabric. But you don't have to get like top of the line wool from New York City to make a costume look lifelike and realistic. Another thing you'll notice about those party store costumes that really looks off is the sheer amount of fabric that's used to make a costume. So one of my favorite examples of this is Bernadette Banner does this great video where if you don't know her, she's an amazing channel, way bigger than my channel, and I watch her a lot. She does Victorian sewing methods and a whole bunch of different kind of design and Victorian uh, costuming, not really costuming, fashion videos. And she also did a early medieval gown by hand. It's beautiful. It's that really expensive wool that I was kind of just referencing and it's top of the line fabrics, top of the line couture sewing techniques, this beautiful fitted red medieval gown. She does a video because her gown was knocked off by a Chinese company and she orders the gown from China and brings it in and compares that gown to her gown. And there's numerous things wrong with it from the quality of the sewing, the trim, the cut, basically everything. But one of the biggest things is the amount of fabric used. And her dress, I wanna say 16 yards, something like that. And 16 yards is, for someone who doesn't sew, just letting you know, that's a lot of fabric. 16 yards is quite a large amount of fabric. But to get certain cuts, you need bigger pieces of fabric. And if you want a garment to look right, you need to give it the fullness that it deserves. The garment that she got in was probably made in like three or four yards and it was of a much lower quality fabric. So if you are going for, you know, any kind of costume with a full skirt, if you're going for a cape that's supposed to be nice and full and dramatic, you've got to get the proper amount of fabric to really give the effect that you're looking for. Another important point when it comes to fabric is any type of outfit that you wear, any type of costume that we look at, there's different fabrics involved. And that's another thing that strikes our eye as incorrect when we look at party store costumes. They're all from the same fabric. Maybe there's like a polyester and a really cheap velvet, but 
yeah, it's usually all that same like gross fabric. So you want to make sure you look at the costume that you want to wear and identify what are the different types of fabric. Someone's here that wants to say hi. Want to say hi? Oh my God, look at him. He's so big. Can you say hi, buddy? You want to put your paws on the table? Look how big he is. Hi. Oh my God, our faces are the same size now. <laughs> Are you a good boy? Say hi. He's my, he is mommy's baby. That is faux show. Sure. He is mommy's little baby. He sits with me while I edit. He sits with me while I do lesson plans. He sits with me while I do everything. And it's like the fact I'm not on the couch right now sitting with him, he's like not really having it. All right. So different fabric types. One example would be like, let's think about if you're going to a Renaissance fair. A normal Renaissance fair costume, like a simple one, would have a chemise underneath, you'd have some kind of corset, and you'd probably have a couple different layers of skirts. So that chemise that's underneath should not be the same fabric as the corset, and it shouldn't be the same fabric as the skirts. Maybe your corset and your top layer skirt might match if that's the look you're going for, but more so the fact that that like chemise that's that's the bottom layer, it's, it's a thin, light fabric. So you want each garment to be in the appropriate fabric that it was meant to be. So again, if your costume is like for a cold and environment and it's a winter type of look like you got to make sure you've got the fur you've got the thick fabric you've got the right heaviness of jacket if you don't when people look at it they're going to be like hmm, okay it's almost there but it's not quite there so that's how you really bring it home and on that same note another thing I find with costumes is we tend to make certain garments out of a fabric that's not appropriate or cheaper to save money. So one place I see this a lot is like, if a costume's supposed to have denim shorts or jeans, it'll be these like cheapy polyester pants that have like a jeans print on them. Like they'll print the stitching on them. Don't do that, just buy a pair of jeans. Just go to Goodwill, go to a thrift store, go to your own closet and buy a real pair of jeans. So if the costume has actual clothing as part of it, like say it's a 1950s look or even a modern day type style costume, buy the actual garment. Don't buy a fake manufactured version of that garment. Tip number four, the devil is in the details. Details are what can really bring your costume all together and really bring home a specific character. But there's something I want you to look at before you go crazy adding like all these extra details that you don't necessarily need and wasting time in a place that you don't need to. I want you to look at your costume and say, is this a costume that could benefit from having a statement piece and the other pieces are simple or does it need to be detailed all over? Let me explain a little bit what I mean. A lot of costumes will have one piece that really kind of ties the whole look together and it's really intricate and detailed and well-crafted. And the rest of the costume, you know, is actually very simple. Um, one example I want to use of this is, this is a hat that I made. I made it uh, three, four years ago um, for my boyfriend and I when we went as Sugar Skulls for Halloween. And really that costume itself, at least for the man, it's not super complicated. The main subject of that costume is the makeup and this really cool hat that I made him. The makeup and the hat are really what needed to be on point in that look. The rest of his costume was kind of just as simple. It was like a black vest, a black shirt, and black pants. I put a little bit of aqua colored trim on his collar. I think I changed out the uh, buttons of the vest for like little skull buttons just to kind of like add a little extra flair there. But really what brought the costume together was this one like significant statement piece. So does your costume just need like one piece to bring the whole thing into one cohesive look? Or is it something that you need to be adding like a little bit of detail to each costume piece to bring it all together? So another example of details really making or breaking the costume is if you look at the movie Bridgerton. Now, I think Bridgerton is gonna be a big costume theme for Halloween this year, for 2021, possibly especially for um, Daphne and the Count. I only watched two episodes, so I don't know if I'm right or not. But um, one of the other characters would wear a lover's eye necklace. And the significance of that was indicating that she had a lover before everyone found out that she was pregnant. And it's basically a necklace of a painting of the eye of the person that you're a lover. Now, if you play that one character and you don't have the lover's eye necklace, then, you know, it's 
Yeah, are you still a character? Of course, but you're missing that one like crucial key detail to the costume that really makes you that specific character. Before you can consider your costume done, I want you to give it like one once over and make sure, you know, are there any trims that need to be added? Does it need like a little bit more sparkle? One thing I like to do is I will take jewelry from a thrift store and I'll break it apart. Like maybe I got a necklace for a dollar that had all these cool charms on it. I'll break it apart and like sew the charms into different places of the costume. Another thing that's really easy to do to a costume is add lights to it. I'll buy these cheapy little string lights that are battery operated on Amazon and you can see stitch the wired lights onto your costume somewhere because at night if things light up it's always like an extra dramatic effect you can also just check you know do I need one more piece of jewelry do I need something for my hair do I, is there a special set of shoes that I can get that you know bring this into the correct time period so all those little extraneous ends when you've got those tied up into like a neat little package that's when your costume is really going to make a splash and last but not least, tip number five is spending a little bit extra in this type of genre can really go a long way, especially if you plan to rewear some core basic items. So like I was talking about before, if you're planning to make something, when you're going to buy fabric, I would really recommend spending the few extra dollars on not necessarily the best fabric you can get, but you know, not the cheapest. Don't always go for the lowest hanging fruit or the cheapest fabric or the cheapest supply available. Let's take, um, let's take wigs for an example. If I was to buy a wig for a show, there's like a $20, $25 version on Amazon that's gonna be that cheap synthetic hair, you can't brush it out, it's super shiny, and it looks like a wig. Then, if you were to go up maybe like $25 to $50, you're now into like cheaper lace front territory, but they look more like human hair. You've got the lace front, that's when it's like lace in the front instead of just like a band, and it blends into your skin. You can usually put a little foundation on it to like make sure it blends in. The hair isn't quite as shiny. It looks a little bit more like human hair. It's probably still synthetic. If you want an actual human hair wig, you're gonna be paying quite more. But it doesn't look as fake as that lowest bottom tier price point would look. And if this is something you really like, you're like, hey, I really like costuming and it's something I wanna do year after year or maybe even beyond Halloween, you decide, you know, I wanna dress up for a Comic-Con or I wanna dress up for a steampunk convention or for a Renaissance fair you want to invest in some of these core pieces that you might use again and again so like my boyfriend and i we have three tupperwares upstairs full of costumes and a lot of it's like costume basics like he has a pair of like renaissance fair pants that are like puffy in the leg and then tight in the calf in probably three different colors he's got a couple different period looking shirts that have like the lace up here with the puffy sleeves um a couple different cloaks i've got a couple different corsets a couple different you know like knee-high socks that will go with different looks a couple different like under blouses um, and then we've got one Tupperware that has like I made this beautiful pirate hat a couple years ago that keeps our like really nice accessories we've got some leather pieces again this is all things that are investment pieces that I can use over and over again in different capacities and they're gonna stand up to the test of time if you throw your money at the cheapest thing that you can get the synthetic wig on Amazon the cheap costume pieces from Spirit Halloween or from other online sources you're basically throwing your money away for that one year. You're gonna spend a hundred bucks on a costume, which a hundred dollars is still a lot of money, when you could have gotten pieces for around that price or maybe a little bit more, and it's not gonna be comfortable, it's not gonna look good, you're gonna be disappointed, and you're probably gonna throw it out at the end of the year. And if you get nothing else from this video, I want you to be happy with what your Halloween look comes out to. I want you to be proud of it. I want you to feel really good when you go out because that's like one of the main things of fashion and costuming is transforming yourself for a night into another creature or person or time period. So if you follow all of these tips that I gave you and you go through the steps and I'm gonna outline some steps for you next, I think you're gonna feel like a whole different person and come out with this Halloween look that you're super duper proud of. Now that you've made it through all of my points and tips and tricks, we're ready to start planning your costume. So this is how I approach it. 
Especially if I'm making something for somebody else, I start with an inspiration picture or a sketch design. Now to help everybody out, I've put a document or a PDF file in the description section below and you can click on it and open it and print it out. And this will help you put onto paper exactly whatever your plan is for your Halloween costume. First, you're gonna start out with your inspiration or your sketch. Now, if you are pulling inspiration from a bunch of different sources, then you wanna kinda of sketch out the idea that you have. Doesn't matter that if you're not a good sketch artist, it's just about getting your idea onto paper. For the example that I'm going to use, I'm going to use the inspiration picture for my boyfriend's costume this year. We decided this year would be a good year since Halloween was a little bit dampened and sad last year. We decided it'd be a great year to try some new things and try some things out of our wheelhouse. So steampunk was the direction we decided to go. And the inspiration picture that really caught his eye was a character done by Two United Horns Creations, and it's called Dr. Cipherus. Now, we're not looking by any means to steal their idea or directly copy their idea, but it was an inspiration picture that was most closely linked to what he had in his head. So taking that picture, we're gonna break that picture down into three categories. I'm gonna break it down into what do I already have, what can I buy, and what can I make? So what do I already have is the cheapest category, obviously, because it's the things that you might already have in your closet or that a friend might have or that you can borrow from somebody or whatever it may be. You're gonna go rummaging through your costume bins, rummage through your own closet, and you're gonna pull out all of the items that you already have in your possession that will work for this costume. So if you look on the sheet that I gave you, you have that first list that says, what do I already have? And you're gonna list all the things that you already have. The second category is what do I need to buy or what can I buy? So if you're costume has denim shorts then buy denim shorts if your costume has a wool jacket and you don't have the capability to make that wool jacket then you're gonna start looking to buy that wool jacket so for this costume in particular the example I'm using a couple of things that we can buy for this are the gloves it makes more sense for us to look on Amazon for a pair of brown gloves and just kind of distress them a little bit um, he's got a leather belt which I can buy and then add some pockets to add some little hooks to um, those globes those like potion globes we're gonna buy those because I obviously am not a glass blower <laughs> can't make those um, and then we're also going to buy that cool leather belt now I have a friend who does leather work and he could make all these things like super easily but for for me, it doesn't make as much sense to make them because they require certain tools, they require certain supplies that for me to go buy all those supplies, it makes much more sense since I don't use them very often to just buy certain items pre-made. Once you've figured all that out and you've come up with a budget, I want you to go through that sheet and list what you wanna buy, price it out on Amazon, price it out on wherever else you wanna buy it so you can make sure you stay within your budget. And then you're gonna go into the category of what do I need to make? Now this could be a very small category. You might only be making one or two items or if you're in a very like specific time period or really like fantasy garment, that might be a very heavy category. So you're gonna list one by one the items that you need to make. For this costume in specific, we need to make the shoulder pad armor that he has. We need to make the arm gauntlets that he has on. We need to make those shin pad pieces. And then we also need to make the mask. The mask is probably like the statement piece of this costume. So specifically because it's Dr. Cyphers, it's a plague doctor. If we were to almost prioritize the items and you sometimes have to do this if you feel like you're running out of time, you prioritize the items that are most important that make the costume statement piece, remember? So for this look, you know, if we got the mask done and the shoulder pads done, but maybe didn't necessarily get the gauntlets and the shin pieces done, it would still look really, really cool. The other part of this that I definitely would have to make is that robe piece that almost fades into the background. It's like the background canvas for all the cool armor pieces, but we still have to make that because it's distressed. It, the color has to match whatever colors we decide to use for the paint on the armor. So that's gonna go on my list of what I have to make. So once you've made your list and figured out exactly what I have to make for this costume, you're then gonna break that list down further into what do I need for supplies? So you're going to, say you have no idea, you're like, I don't even know how to start making this stuff. Okay, you're gonna go on Google and you're gonna start looking for tutorials. How do I make gauntlets? How do I make shoulder armor? How do I make cosplay armor? There are so many tutorials out there at this point. I found some great tutorials for very, at least it looks easy. It's probably not going to be nearly as easy as it looks, but I found a great uh, channel that basically does steampunk cosplay armor. So hopefully I'm going to follow those tutorials and be able to make something that looks somewhat decent. But 
you gotta look around. There's plenty, plenty, plenty of tutorials out there that'll give you what supplies you need and kind of give you a time estimate of how long you think it'll take. So you gotta start there. Start making a list, start coming up with a plan, start ordering your supplies. Again, we're gonna go back to point number one. Make sure you give yourself enough time because if you have to order specialty supplies, you need time to get to your house, you need time to go shop, all that good stuff. So the last step of this, before you even start making whatever, is you're gonna block out your time. I put a calendar on the back of this and I want you to put in dates of when you wanna have certain things done by. Okay, I wanna have all my supplies ordered by this date. I want to have everything cut out by this date and give yourself a time schedule and adhere to it and don't push it off. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I want this to be fun for you. I want this to be a fun experience. I want you to fall in love with costume design like I am. I want you to enjoy this process and want to repeat it year after year and want to grow year after year and want to like get better in your costume making skills year after year, just like I have. If I could give you one final piece of advice to leave with besides making sure you have fun is buy extra. If you have it in your budget, if you have a certain supply like certain paint that's really dependent, your costume look is dependent on that one item, buy a little extra, buy a little extra thread, buy a little bit of extra fabric. So if you mess up cutting, you have a little bit more to work with and you don't have to run back to the store and waste more time waiting in line, waiting for something to come in the mail. Just buy a little bit extra. When it comes to Halloween costumes, that's all the advice I've got for you. It takes time to build skills. Please don't get frustrated if you try to take on a sewing project and maybe it doesn't come out the way you want it to. Keep in mind, no one has an idea of what you were thinking in your head. So anything that you made, people are gonna be super impressed. They're gonna be impressed that you tried. They're gonna be impressed that you made something yourself and they're gonna be impressed that you brought the whole look together. I hope I helped you on your costume making journey today, but before you head out, one thing you can do to help out my little baby corner of the internet is by liking and subscribing to my channel. One way that you can help a smaller creator grow is the more interaction a video has, the more it tells YouTube that this is great content and it'll put it in front of more eyes. And at the end of the day, that's what I love to do. I'm a teacher, I love costumes, and I love to help people. So I really hope that you enjoy this content. I hope it was useful to you. And thank you so much for stopping by Megan Grace DIY. And happy Halloween! Yay! Spooky season! <laughs>